G'day, my name's Jamie. I'm head of the Department of Electrical and Computer Systems Engineering at Monash University. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what engineering is, and in particular, what electrical and computer systems engineering is all about. So what is electrical and computer systems engineering? It's one of these things, I don't know that, uh, Every time I go around to anybody's house, they do ask me if I can fix their TV or fix their video recorder. And usually I haven't got much of a clue how to do that. So I think this, this cartoon's quite good in uh, explaining the difficulties of being an electrical engineer. The word engineering comes from a Latin word, ingenerare. And that actually means to create or to devise. So the very word engineering means it comes from the notion of creativity because it involves design. It involves creating new things. So obviously that's very much a creative process. So an engineer is a professional practitioner of engineering concerned with applying scientific, economic, social, and practical knowledge, mathematics, and ingenuity to develop solutions for technical problems. Engineering is a way to think about problems. It's much more than just learning about how to analyze and design electrical circuits, for example. And it's why engineers often get employed in uh, management consulting companies or in quantitative units of banks. It's not because they can design a bridge or analyze circuits, but it's because of the way that engineers are taught to solve problems, the critical thinking, the abstraction, and so on. So what's electrical engineering? Well, it's a field of engineering that makes use of electromagnetism, electricity, electronics, information theory to create solutions to problems. This electricity thing is turning out to be a pretty useful thing. I wonder how we can make it available to everybody. There's a problem that electrical engineers faced some time ago and are still trying to address today. I'm sick of writing letters and sending smoke signals. There must be a better way to communicate with Bob. We get the electrical telegraph, we get wireless communications, all from this fundamental problem of communicating information and doing it more efficiently. Wouldn't it be good to have a device that could perform calculations and process data really quickly? And from the beginnings of computing devices and electronic computing devices, in the late 1940s or early 1950s, we've had an, a revolution in computing that I don't think you'll argue has totally transformed the world in which we live. How could we explore Mars? What an amazing technical challenge to have a robot land on Mars and drive around and act like a scientific laboratory communicating all the information back to Earth. So electrical engineering, it's a lot of different things. It's power, it's signal processing, computing, electronics, control systems, and telecommunications. We're also the department of not only electrical engineering, but computer systems engineering. And it's a really important part of who we are as a department. Computer engineers analyze, design, develop, manufacture, all kinds of digital products and systems that include, include both hardware and software. So it's far more than just designing computers as you might understand them, as laptops and desktops and so on. It's way beyond that because um, nearly every device these days is full of embedded, embedded computer systems, monitoring and controlling operation and so on. So you should think of computer engineering in that much broader way. So embedded computers, smart domestic applications, desktop computers, mobile phones, medical implants, and automobiles, just some of the areas where computers or embedded systems are very heavily used. Large computer systems as well, things that might uh, beat you playing chess or like the, the machine Watson that uh, was able to win Jeopardy recently. All right, you should know some famous electrical engineers if you are gonna pursue a degree in electrical engineering. So I'm gonna list some now. This guy here, you should know, Thomas Edison, the wizard of Menlo Park, more than 1,000 inventions in his lifetime. So he was a fairly creative chap 
You might know things like the light bulb is often what's associated, but the phonograph, and more importantly, ways of generating and distributing electricity. His adversary, Nikola Tesla. I've got a book about this guy. It's called The Man Who Invented the 20th Century, such as his importance and, and the, the amazing range of things that he did in the field of electrical engineering. Ah, now this woman you really should know. Her name is Grace Hopper. She was a pioneer in the field of computer science and computer engineering, wrote one of the first compilers, programmed some of the first computers. She's got a US Navy destroyer and a supercomputer named after her, which is a pretty fine achievement. She was only 18 when this photo was taken. She obviously had lived a very hard life. Now, this person here, the person who um, was able to demonstrate long range wireless transmission and to use that to make a lot of money. His name was Marconi and he was a, an engineer and an entrepreneur. And if we zoom in, what you can see there is the world's very first mobile phone, my friends, because that is Marconi on top of a, a moving cart. And you can see in the middle there, that big cylindrical thing is actually an antenna and he's moving the cart around to test the range of his new wireless transmission system. So you've seen it here first, the world's first mobile phone. Uh, now these guys here, William Shockley and co, are the people that um, invented the transistor that totally revolutionized and started the electronics industry. Aha, now here's a little test for you. I'm, I'm uh, in my spare time, I am uh, taking art classes, believe it or not, and um, Rather than just show you a photo, I've decided to draw one of my, my second favorite engineer, I should say. This guy here asked the question, is there a fundamental limit to how much information you can put through a particular channel, like a, 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 a twisted pair cable or a coaxial cable or the air or an optical fiber? Can you say that there's a limit to how much information you can, you can put through that reliably? And this man is called Claude Elwood Shannon, and he addressed those questions and answered those questions in about 1948 in a, in a very, very famous paper. And he's really regarded as the father of modern digital um, communications as a result. And if you want to know what he really looked like, well, there you go. And you can see why I'm not doing that well in my art classes. So Shannon was my second favorite engineer. What about my favorite? Well, our favorite engineer is that man there. Believe it or not, Rowan Atkinson, Mr. Bean, did uh, electrical engineering in Newcastle in the UK and went on to do a master's in control at Oxford, no less. So it just goes to show where uh, a degree in electrical engineering can take you. Um, the National Academy of Engineering in the United States came up with a list of the 20 greatest engineering achievements of the 20th century. Let's have a look at some of them. Electrification, the automobile, aeroplanes, water supply and distribution, electronics, radio, computers, telephone. You can see how many of them actually involve electrical engineering. And that would include, you know, the internet, imaging, household appliances, laser and fiber optics. So many of these greatest achievements at the heart have electrical engineering involved. So that's fine. That was the great achievements of the past century. But what are the challenges that you'll face as an engineer in the future? Well, the National Academy of Engineering also came up with these grand challenges. How do you make solar energy economical? How do you provide energy from fusion? Manage the nitrogen cycle, provide access to clean water, given so many of the world's population don't even have that, that basic human right. This interface between engineering and medicine is becoming incredibly important as we have an aging population. How do you advance health informatics, engineer better med medicines and reverse engineer the brain? What about preventing nuclear terror? What about cyber security and the challenges in securing all our, our digital data as more and more is conducted digitally? Virtual reality, advanced personalized learning and so on. There's some amazing challenges that lie ahead, some very exciting things that you might end up 
having to try to solve or contribute to if you go on to a career in engineering generally and electrical and computer systems engineering in particular.